Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at how to create a banner grabber uh, with Python 3. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is I got I got a lot of requests, uh, you know, to actually uh, explain the process of what's happening uh, behind the scenes and the various ways uh, one can go about creating a banner grabber with Python 3. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. Uh, for those of you asking uh, what I'm currently using uh, as my IDE, I currently use a Gitpod, which is a, uh, a GitHub uh, extension or an application that allows you to edit your code on GitHub using a, uh, an instance of Visual Studio Code, but adapted to that. So you can actually work on, you know, you can actually work on your code uh, through your browser and your code is automatically saved to your GitHub repository. So it's a great tool. You can check it out. Uh, the link in, is in the description. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to lay out the logic to sort of explain what's happening uh, behind the scenes so that you can understand it. And then what we'll do is we'll make the code uh, a bit more organized and efficient. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import the socket library. All right. So socket. And uh, that's pretty much uh, given that, uh, you know, we're going to be working with sockets. Um, so what we can do now is sort of understand um, the logic of the of the script. So. Uh, we are going to require the user to uh, enter an IP address and a port, which is always better instead of, uh, you know, specifying it manually through the script. So we are going to need to have that done. Uh, secondly, we need to uh, utilize some of the uh, socket uh, libraries uh, or some of the socket methods or functions to actually connect to that port. And then uh, the data that we, we receive back is going to be the banner. So that is in essence uh, what's happening in the background, right? Or the logic of this script. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the default convention. So we're going to call upon uh, the, uh, the socket uh, module from the socket class. Uh, so again, sorry, uh, socket, there we are. And if we just highlight over it, you can see the module socket from uh, the module class. Uh, so from the socket, uh, from yeah, from the socket class. So, uh, so now that we've initialized that, we can now use s to call upon various other functions or methods within the socket class. Uh, so let's get started by first laying out the logic here. And uh, again, we're going to prompt the user to enter the IP address. So we're going to uh, use the variable IP, and we're going to say input, and we're going to say please. Um, enter your or we can say please enter the ip right and we can use that and then for the port we need to convert this uh we need to convert this into a string so that uh, we when we pass it uh we, we can actually connect through it uh but um we can actually connect through it directly or convert it back into an integer so uh, we can just say input and uh, we can say please uh, enter the port and uh, very, very simple there. And now we can say, all right, we're ready to connect. So we'll call upon the connect. Uh, we'll call upon the connect module here. Uh, so there we are. So that's the connect function. And uh, we will now need to pass the parameters, which are going to be the variables that we just got here. And of course, the users inputted the values. It's going to be uh, IP and it's going to be uh, port. Right. So those are the two parameters that will then be used to, uh, you know, for the connection. And now we want to receive uh, the data. So what we can do to save uh, to save time and make everything simple is we can say print out what we receive uh, immediately and we can limit it to 1024 bytes. So I'm going to say s dot receive. So we're going to call upon uh, the receive module here. So again, you can highlight over it. And of course, it's the receive function. Uh, and of course, within the receive function, uh, the parameters we need to specify are the size, the maximum size of or the maximum amount of data uh, that we should receive back. And of course, we're going to print that out. So uh, we can save this now. And uh, let me try and run this in my terminal or let me try and run it locally so that we can actually test a banner here. So I'm just going to download this script and we'll go uh, and let's save this here. And uh, let me just open up a terminal. And there we are. And just go into my downloads folder here and we have the banner grabber script so ch mod plus x and banner grabber and we can say python 3 banner grabber and hit enter it's going to ask us to prompt uh it's going to prompt us to uh, it's going to prompt us and ask us about uh, to actually enter the ip so i'm going to enter my router's ip address and i know i have 
uh, a uh, I have SSH running on my router so I'm going to just specify the IP address here and the port I want to specify is the SSH port so let's see what banner we're able to get from the SSH port I'm going to hit enter and uh, you can see we got an error here um, so the error is telling us that the an integer is required and we got a string and that's because uh, we need to actually convert this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, let's convert this into a string here, or we can actually enter the port with single quotes, but um, let me just convert all of this into a string. And uh, we then furthermore need to convert it back into an integer here, which is pretty much necessary. So I'm going to convert this back into uh, an integer. Um, so let, let me just add the last bracket here and we can save this uh, and uh, what we can do is let me just uh, remove the previous script here or i could i should have just edited it uh, in any case let me just download a fresh the fresh script uh, here and i'm going to hit save uh, and of course i can run it through git pod but again i'm running this locally so it'd be much better to have it this way so uh, what we'll do is let's just run that one more time and then we will run the script here and let me enter the ip address 0.1 and we'll hit port uh, 22 and hit enter. And as you can see, it tells us we're running SSH, uh, SSH 2 or uh, 2.0. And this is, uh, it's running drop bear SSH here or a drop bear service. Uh, and the, you can, you get the service version number, which is 2012.55. So again, it's uh, quite an outdated uh, SSH uh, server uh, or SSH server uh, program running. Uh, and again, now this is where we can sort of start uh, integrating uh, these various banners, uh, you know, in a list or so we can sort of collate a list of uh, vulnerable uh, banners or vulnerable services and their banners into a text document or into a list. And then we can create our vulnerability, uh, our vulnerability scanner. So, for example, if uh, the drop bear SSH version 2.0 was vulnerable to a particular exploit, we can add this to a list and then we can scan our, our entire network. And any computer or any, uh, or any system that is running the, that particular version will be flagged. But we'll be covering that in the vulnerability analysis uh, section. So uh, the next step now is to sort of make the, uh, the, the script a little bit more functional and sort of organize it better. Right. So and uh, many of you actually asked me to start including uh, functions more. All right. So I'm going to just remove the, the script here. And uh, what we can do now is uh, let's get rid of all of this here and we'll rewrite the script with functions. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, let me just create the main function and um, the main function, I'm not gonna pass any parameters through here. So again, uh, the logic is very simple. We're just gonna prompt uh, in, within the main function, we're gonna prompt the user to enter the IP uh, and uh, the port, all right? So we're gonna say IP is gonna be equal to, and then of course, we specify the, uh, we want the user to input this one to say, uh, please enter the IP like so. And then we say port is going to be equal to, we're converting this into a string. And then the input here is going to be, uh, we're just gonna say, uh, we'll give an input message, please enter the port here like so. Very, very simple. And then uh, we now need to create our, our banner our banner grabbing function. So let's just create it up here. So I'm going to say def, we'll just call it banner. Yeah, let's just call it banner. And uh, we want to pass uh, the parameters we want to pass are going to be IP and port, of course, because we want to use them here. Um, so I'm just gonna sorry, I'm just gonna hit enter here, and we can get started. So now the function or the functionality pretty much remains the same. So we're going to initialize the socket module. Uh, so socket uh, from the socket class. So socket, uh, there we are. And uh, now we, we can say uh, socket.connect or s.connect and we then pass uh, in the variables here uh, and we will say IP and port and we need to convert this into an integer because we are passing the values entered by the users from the main function. So I will just enter this here and uh, let us close those brackets over here. All right, excellent. So now uh, we can actually print this. So uh, again, we just say print and we just say socket dot receive and we will lit we will limit this to 1024 bytes and uh, we can hit save. Uh, however, we still need to call. Uh, we need to make sure we, we call the banner function 
uh, within the main function and of course we need to also specify the main function which is really easy to do and I'll be covering that uh, specific syntax as we move along. Um, so we can just say banner, we give the function name and then of course the um, uh, the parameters in this case is going to be IP and port that we want to pass through and that should initialize that function uh, you know because the main function is usually executed first so we can say main here and that's going to execute the main function and then uh, the main function is going to call upon the banner function which will then again give us the uh, the banner grabbing functionality that we're looking for all right so that is uh, quite simple so let us save this script now and we can actually download this and there we are and we'll just wait for it to download and save file and we can now move forward all right excellent so let me just clear this um, let me just clear the terminal here and uh, we we want to give it uh, executable permissions and once we launch the script again we're prompted by um, by, by the the text here so please enter your ip uh, and you can test this on a, a variety of hosts i'm just using my my router because it does have a familiar a banner running on or it does have a f familiar banner running on that particular ssh service uh, one that is that you guys can actually see works. So again, I'm just going to hit port 22. I'm going to hit enter, and uh, we're going to see that uh, the name socket. And yeah, that is because we did not import socket. Sorry about that. Um, so port socket. There we are. That's the importance of libraries here. And uh, you know what? We can just edit this from the. We we can just do it. Uh, you know, through nano. Uh, so there we are. We'll just hit import socket. Um, there we are socket and uh, we can just hit control O and we're good to go all right so let's run the script one more time uh, 0.1.1 22 hit enter and there we are we can see it's running SSH version 2.0 drop there uh, now this is where uh, when it comes down to improving the script and I'll show you why in a second uh, you might want to you start using exception handling uh, you know for scripts uh, in which you are in, in which you have uh, you know functionality uh, or you are probing targets for data and you might not be sure as to what data you will be receiving and you want to make sure you can handle your exceptions uh, really really well so again uh, if I say let me just run the script one more time say 0.1.1 and I say maybe port 1 for example which of course no service is running on port 1 and I hint and I enter here uh, you can see that it's going to tell us the connection was refused so uh, we uh, can use exception handling and this is what I want you guys to do. You can find this script on GitHub and I want you to implement, uh, you know, try and accept, for example, so that uh, any uh, any other data than the data we are looking for is rejected completely and we get another uh, and we get, uh, you know, a, a user specific error like uh, we could not retrieve a banner or we could not connect to that particular port. Right. So again, this tells us that the connection refused. Um, and again, we can try other services. So uh, I'm not sure if I have port 80 running. I I think I do. Uh, let, let's actually try it. 192.168.1.1 port 80 hit enter. And uh, let's see what happens here. And uh, yeah, we pretty much we will be waiting for this to give us a response here. If it doesn't give a response, we also might want to implement uh, the default timeout uh, functionality here. So again, we can just terminate this and we can say um, if it doesn't give us a response uh, within, uh, so we can say s dot uh, set, uh, we can say set the timeout here and we can say, let's give this five seconds. So if we don't get a response within five seconds, we want you to, you know, to actually terminate the script here. Um, so we can do that now uh, I'm sure most of you actually realize this so what I'm going to do now is if we try and take a look at the banner we can see that uh, we can we can actually clear this out quite a bit and I wanted to introduce one of the string uh, stripping functionality here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit banner grabber dot pi here and uh, now where we actually print out the the data that we receive, we can actually sort of, um, we can actually try and play around with the way the uh, the data or the banner is displayed to the user. So I can say, for example, Python 3, and we can say banner grabber, and hit enter, and uh, I'll just use port 22, and I hit enter, as you can see, we have some uh, text here that again, 
uh, we might not want and we you know we simply want to get the banner itself so uh, for example if I wanted to get rid of this B here I can I can do it by using the strip or the string strip uh, method here so again very very simple to implement so let us actually do this sorry I wanted to use nano here uh, so uh, we go to print um, and uh, right over here is where we start implementing the functionality so uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, we need to make sure that we're dealing with a string here so we want to convert this into a string so we're going to say string and we're going to say s dot receive and we're going to limit this to again 1024 and you can play around with that as much as you want and then uh, we are going to say uh, we want to strip this or we want to strip the data you receive and we want to get rid of this anything that has you know this b over here which i know is quite vague and is uh, it's prone to give us errors especially if the banner does have um have a b here but again we've specified the apostrophe uh and uh, we can sort of once we actually close this and uh, we can actually test it out now um so if you take a look at the previous result you can see we have this b here and uh, now if we run the script uh, 192.168.1.1 and 22 hit enter you can see it, it got rid of that B here and uh, we now have uh, the banner itself so again that's just an example of how to use uh, the uh, string strip uh, method here uh, if you want to actually clean out your your output or the uh, the data you receive and uh, you want to print it out in a more uh, convenient and um, you know really a good good looking format um, so that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in regards to the banner grabber script, which is, as you can see, quite simple to understand. The logic is fairly easy. And again, I covered the uh, yeah, I covered the script really uh, at a basic level, and then we implemented functions. So again, you guys can improve upon the script. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you can make it better, you can uh, you can make uh, the you can you can actually uh, print out the banners uh, a, lo a whole lot clearer. And then in the next video in this series. Uh, we'll take a look at how to use these banners uh, to create a vulnerability scanner and that will also be very very good so uh, yeah thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace guys